on A. Hope you check out my new series on how to surf Florida waves, give you a totally different perspective on surfing. My advice, do your own thing. Surf for the joy of it. And for nothing else. Yeah, look at this old rainbow surfboard. <laughs> I was checking this thing out. I put it back here, you know, where do surfboards go to die? It's like that movie Toy Story. All the old toys that were loved once and lived their heyday and now just been put in a corner to just molder away. Yeah, old ideas, SSE, Surf System Epoxy. The new epoxy thing was what this was back in the day. Hey, Flipside Fishing. Good to see you here. I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm going to start to stream more. I'm back on a streaming thing, so I hope you'll jump on when I do. Stoked you're here. This old rainbow surfboard, yeah, it was a chapter, really, in the early days of epoxy surfboards. Doug Wright had a little factory in Indian Harbor Beach, and he was cranking out really cool surfboards. In fact, I was surfing them up in Rhode Island. I had a 6'8 gun for surfing large waves in New England, which it gets pretty large up there, let me say. In the winter, you might be hiking across a foot and a half of snow to get into that water, but it does not disappoint. I surfed days up there that were easily Hawaiian style, 20 foot offshore winds, easily. With that 6.8, and that was an epoxy board, ultra light. Ultimately, that board was snapped directly into two pieces. And I mean even. And now how many of these rainbow epoxy boards have I snapped into two pieces? I don't know the exact number, but it's four or five over the years. And I found that that's what happened. Of course, they're much more rigid than the polyester board. Much more buoyant, too. Just nice in Florida. Give you a little extra float. Um, but one of the problems they had with these boards was the outgassing. Yeah, it gets huge up in New England. Great comment. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to do a bunch more videos about surfing up there. And uh, I, I did one recently about surfing Boston, which is, you know, who would have thought you could surf Boston? But you sure can. And there's quality surf all around there. Uh, back in the day, it was about something like surfing in toxic waste. No joke. Sewage uh, as well. But uh, they've done a lot of cleanup up there, but I, I'm not going to vouch for it. I'm just saying that the breaks are incredible. And, and you can get to areas that are really you know, pretty clean because it's a big ocean. There are point breaks and coves and beach breaks and all kinds of just adventurous things. Giant white sharks lurking in the shallows just ready to bite you off at the torso. Man, that's living. But uh, yeah, this rainbow is the last remnant of, the, of the, that phase of my life and maybe that phase of kind of surfing industry where they're experimenting with polyester boards and they started to figure out the material. And I think Doug Wright was a pioneer of that, in my opinion. And uh, resulted in this board, which was really fun. I actually had to repair it. What they would do is you take them back in because they outgas so much and they would actually drill a hole and then fill the cavity up with epoxy and then so they, they always fixed it for free but you know they're experimenting with materials so you're kind of on the cutting edge I never really minded that being the case that probably um, that probably didn't help with the snappage rate but uh, I have no complaints this is an incredible board and I think you produce just volumes of great highly surfable boards but you know, behind it is another phase. This is a kid, kid's board, so to speak. This is one that Jonathan surfed when he was little. A little foamy. And I'll tell you what, that thing is just as fun as any board you can get. And especially when you're a little guy, like Jack and Jonathan age. It's amazing what they can do on those. And then you know what? It's fun to do it when you're my age, too. I've been getting really into soft top surfing. 
lately. I mean, I've just surfed for years and years and years, decades, <laughs> in all conditions, all days. I mean, almost, I think at one point, it got kind of grueling to have to just be committed to constantly surfing every day. And um, why is, I think I kind of lost some of the novelty and adventure in it, too. It got, and we also started doing contests, and I don't like the effect of that either, adding that to it. But uh, now I've gotten back to my roots and I find myself going down for one foot surf sessions with a softy at the, you know, in my local area and having a ball. I mean, just some of the best surf sessions of my life. And there, there's like one or two other guys out as far as you can see. They must have figured out that same thing, too, which is that the fun factor can be reproduced. If you've been surfing for a long time. And uh, just like that surfboard over there um, your ideas change over time and they fade away and some don't make sense anymore like that board doesn't make sense for me to surf anymore first of all because my back is destroyed from injuries um, but second of all it's injuries from surfing um, but and I just can't pop up on a short tiny board like that as quick as I could I have short slightly wider boards I can now but look at this this is a moringa tree I know a lot of the a lot of surfers I know are also into growing things. I sure am. I've got a YouTube channel called Eat Your Backyard. By the way, go check that out if you uh, aren't aware of it. Where I tell you all about things like this moringa tree. That's called the tree of life, friends. That is a multivitamin essentially. You take these leaves; it'll grow up. You, you trim it like a shrub, but it's a large tree. It'll get a large trunk. But every year you just whack it back, stump it almost, and it'll just comes back with sprouts. And you harvest the leaves, dry them. And people make teas with them. They can all you can also eat them. They taste like horseradish, especially when they're this young size. They're good to eat, um, but again, they're a little bit spicy. But what the typical thing people do is that they dry these leaves and then they make it into a tea and drink it. And it's like a multivitamin, and they claim it extends life. But it makes sense it would because the actual measured minerals and vitamins in the moringa is insane. It's got more potassium than a banana, more vitamin C than an orange. And on and on and on. So it's just loaded with what you need. That's why I'm growing it. I'm, I got in, I'm into a thing here where I have a permaculture food producing system. I decided it's time to get serious about having food production in my yard with all the nonsense going on, all the all the silly time. So I did things like. Hmm, here, tamarind trees. I put tamarind under the bucket because I don't want the chickens to eat it. Look, we also got chickens. These little chicks will produce hens. That one's a rooster, actually. Anybody wants a rooster, let me know. If you have a farm or something, where you can have one. That's a beautiful, beautiful rooster, but got to get rid of it. But these little hens, each one of them will produce 250 eggs a year. And in the meantime, produce all kinds of manure and fun as pets. But... Yeah, they also convert over to meat pretty well. <laughs> so, man, chickens are freaking cool. I, I've learned so much about them and now having them in the yard. They'll come to you when you call them now, even in three weeks. Here, chick, chick. Come here, chick, chick. Here, chick, chick. Yeah, that's a good one. Look at you. You're on surf all day, A1I. Hey, chicky hen. This one is Sally the Sea Monster. That's what we call her. Sally the Sea Monster. C is for chicken. We call them sea monsters because Justin Rhodes, another YouTube guy who has a cool farm, coined the phrase. And I think he was talking about Cornish hens, I'm pretty sure, which are a type of meat bird. Just to give you an idea of the chicken game, I know this is kind of off topic for surfing, but you know. I think there's overlap because so many, so many people who like surfing like this stuff. Uh, you can get Cornish hen chicks. Hey, little chicky. Rhode Island Red. These are bar barred Plymouth rocks. And you can grow them to a 12 pound meat bird in six to eight weeks. <laughs> and you can do the math from there. But in terms of if you were trying to create a system where, and you can, you know, have chickens like that you could uh you know with not that much effort produce plenty of of uh protein and meat for your family so i mean just the idea of here's my thing 
why would we stay connected to systems that don't serve us? Why? I have no desire to depend on things that don't help me out. And um, so the food system's one of them. <laughs> and I don't know of a more important system than food and water. I think that's the number one system. And uh, you know, you can easily like get a get your yard into a situation where look, producing. And by the way, if I want to really get serious, I get more of these vertical growers and I could have a probably about eight more of those and I would have ample vegetables and up out of the way of the chickens. They can't get to it. Yeah. And look. Mangoes. Mangoes swinging in the wind. <laughs> More mangoes over there. Bananas, coconuts, cherries. So, yeah, you, all that stuff's on each your backyard, but... Surfing can't be the only pillar in anybody's life. I've learned that over the years, but I, I certainly still love the surfing. It's just that it's easy to kind of fall out of, you know, habits when it gets boring, and I'm kind of eating the soul food of surfing now. I'm looking for that one foot lined up wave on the high tide that I'm riding five feet from the beach for 15 yards <laughs> sometimes. You know, like I find those moments to be a new space in surfing that I hadn't explored before that is fun, exhilarating, challenging, all that kind of stuff. It's just of no consequence. Just grab that softy throw on some trunks well not in that order and then out I go it's that easy don't need a leash nothing those little chicky doos are eating those bugs so let's say if you have bugs in your yard bug problem you will not after you have chickens they love them Okay, well, thanks for watching Surf All Day ONA. Appreciate you. If you're not subscribed already, please do. If you can hit the thumbs up, that always helps the magical YouTube algorithms to position information for the masses. <laughs> that wasn't a very convincing argument. Just hit the thumbs up. Thanks. All right. I'll be trying to stream here over the next week or so, so uh, stay tuned. Hope to see you on. Thanks.